Hi all. Yes, another fascinating game from Cavalier Fu. He was playing a gauntlet of games. He created a gauntlet of games, Leela ID 495. This is against Laser 1.5 Blitz format, five minutes each with 10 second increment, I believe. D4 from Leela 0495. We have the Slav Defense, an immediate exchange on D5. Quite common is actually knight f3 here, for example, knight f6, knight c3, e6, e3. This is very common. So the immediate exchange though, c takes knight c3, knight f6, bishop f4, knight c6, e3, bishop f5. Now white tries to punish black, leader tries to punish black, neglecting b7 there. Knight a5, this has all been seen before. This is the, the key top move here to address b7. Clearly the bishop's on b8 here, so there's no rook b8. If queen b6, this is better for white just taking. And whatever black does, it's a nice advantage. If knight b4, just, just this, it's a nice advantage for white. Uh, so if e6, again, this, this position is just thought to be a nice advantage for white, theoretically. So knight a5 is the top move played here. Check, key move. Dragging the bishop back behind the pawn chain and closed in its own pawn chain by dragging the bishop back. The alternative knight c6 is not very pleasant for black. For example, knight f3, bishop b5, and then the pressure mounts on c6. And if we get this position with the fragmentation here, bishop a6 is strong. c6 is vulnerable, extremely vulnerable here. It's not about b7, it's now about c6. This protects b2. White is clearly better here in these scenarios where white is actually winning that c6 pawn. So a big advantage. So basically, yeah, knight c6 is, is silly anyway. The knight, this is the idea to play bishop d7. Queen drops back, taking away the f5 square for the bishop. So the bishop is potentially now enclosed, well it is now, enclosed in its own pawn chain. This is a very pleasant looking position for white. Bishop e7, white castles. Now laser plays a very computer-like move. Breaking a human general rule, a knight on the rim is dim. But we're not strong enough to punish engines when they play moves like this. Will Leela be punishing this knight on the rim being dim? If castles, let's have a look. Knight e5 is a nice outpost. This position, for example, is a bit of pressure. And in fact, black might have to be willing to sack uh, the H pawn sometimes. I mean, it can get a dynamic equality by sacking the H pawn anyway. It's it's interesting continuation in its own right. White would only have a small edge here. Black's got some prospects there. So that kind of thing, uh, anyway, avoids uh, the knight on the rim scenario. We have bishop e5, h6. Uh, there's some interesting lines with f6 here. Check out the uh, interactive PGN I'll give in the, in the description in the, in the pinned comment. So you can check out the variation yourself. But there's an interesting tactical line here with knight takes e5 now. Why is a decisive advantage here in this line? For example, like this. It carries on like that. It's it's just a big advantage for white. Yeah, that knight's really punished there. So yeah, f6 <laughs> is a step too far. h6 is played. Queen e2, black castles. And now Leela plays g4. And there's a short term window of tactics here. Well, some forcing moves, but there's a longer term window which is revealed here, which we can see as humans, which is this semi-open G file now. So we've got the bishop that was forced back in its pawn chain. We've got a G file, which white can double rooks with. We've got a nice bishop on E5 pointing at black's king, and this bishop as well. Look at the bishops, they're absolutely beautiful. G6 is played king H1. This is just poetry now. Knight C4, rook G1. At this point, Leader's not concerned about knight takes e5. Bishop e8 is played. Now, if knight takes e5, d takes, this position is no good. Uh, it's just very, very uh, dangerous for the black king. 
uh, just to give you an example, bang, check, you know, smashing through a rook g6. As, as, as a simple example, it's just a very dangerous position. So if if black here uh, values king safety, this kind of move to try and avoid getting mated, but it just loses a pawn instead. Where black's pinning that dangerous bishop to the king, but white's got a big edge anyway. So for the moment, anyway, uh, bishop e8. This isn't addressed. This knight takes e5, but it is here. It is here after bishop e8. Lila actually gives up the light square bishop now. So what's the big difference? Well, this is much more solid now, bishop e8, for that uh, pawn chain. It's adding solidity to Black's king, although it's hemming in pieces. I'll give you an example. If white tries to play uh, here, instead of bishop takes c4, queen f3, Sorry, bishop takes c4 was was played. If queen f3 instead, then this knight takes e5 should be under more favourable circumstances for black. It's it's actually much more favourable circumstances. Black should be about equal dynamic equality. So anyway, this this knight snapped off. So we have this aggressive bishop, which is not going anywhere anytime soon, and in fact. Queen f3 now ties down the black queen to defend f6. King g7 going into a nasty kind of self pin. Uh, this is a very dangerous position because of queen h3. Just to give you a simple example, if b5, queen h3, and we have some fireworks coming up. For example, here, bang, queen takes h5, knight takes f7 check, is mating. For example, here, that's mate, the knight's covering the escape squares. And king takes rook g7 checkmate. So very very dangerous position with queen h3. So king g7 in advance of that. Um, and now we have knight e2. So the knight's coming into the attack as well. So there's pressure points on e6, g6, and f7. There's a pin knight. There's a pin pawn here. A lot of things are pinned here. Rook h8, knight f4, rook c6. Now white just builds up rook g3, but it's not just about a potential doubling of rooks, it's about taking away a defensive rook with rook h3. Queen c8, knight d3 for the moment. So putting the pressure on f6 again, we see rook c4, rook a g1, b6. Now Leela takes away a defensive rook with rook h3. Rook takes. As an example, well, the white resting takes and bishop f6. So here takes and bishop f6 winning. So the rook is swapped off. Knight takes. Queen e8. The knight goes back. King g8. Now queen h3. With the big threat of queen h6 in this position, black has to be very careful. If I'll give you an example continuation, if b5, queen h6, b4, knight f4, this is just going to be slaughter time for the black king. For example, like this, mating. Yeah, the scenario is where it's absolute slaughter time. So, in the absence of the light square bishop, the other pieces are really on the attack, as you can see here. Um, yeah, if knight takes queen h8, checkmate. So all the other pieces are really on the attack here. We see queen c8. And actually here, queen f3 putting the queen back to protect f6. Knight f4, queen d7, b3 kicking the rook. Now this is a fascinating tactical aspect of the game. What does Leela play? What would you play in this position? I can tell you not just what Leela played, but what my my engine Houdini uh, thought was really strong in this position, but they're both really strong. It's a really strong position for white anyway. So absolute high precision clinical finish might not be in Leela's reach right now, but what she did play is very very effective and winning in any case. Leela actually took the front of the pawn chain. Uh, traditional wisdom: if you take a pawn 
on it's on 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 the uh, underpinning the pawn chain like f7 it's undermining g6 so this seems a bit strange to take a a pawn at the head of the pawn chain rather than the base of the pawn chain my engine is saying take the pawn at the base of the pawn chain and as an example this really smashes up black because then we can take that that was rooted by the f7 pawn and it's just a slaughter time it's absolute slaughter time this continuation here because of that pin uh, is just really nasty if we get this situation Queen g7 threatening rook takes and Bishop f6 pinning the Queen for example just put that on the board this this position is just slaughter so say like this it's just absolutely winning so there's a winning continuation with Knight takes f7 and if King takes f7 Knight takes g6 now maybe Lila might have missed this weird quirky knight h8 check. It seems to be one of the strongest moves. Because this position is painful for black, threatening bishop f6. Say so bishop h5, queen f4, the queen comes back to protect f6. Rook c7. It's just it's it's black's cracking here. Queen e8 allows bishop f6. But it's it's uh it's all over here. So anyway, in this situation, Leela actually chose this. So head of the pawn chain. But after bishop takes f6, this is sufficient. This is a massive position for white. White's actually threatening rook g3 to either f3 or h3. So threatening mates on f8. Black played the desperate e5. As an example, say black ignored this uh, rook g3 then rook f3 is terminal for the black king for example here what does black do this is just absolute massacre checkmate so uh basically yeah e5 is a desperate uh throw of the dice desperate d takes queen f5 this ending is just so much better for white king g2 protecting f2 e6 black snaps that pawn King comes up the board now, like Capablanca King here, very aggressive. Rook on the seventh and the Capablanca King. This is very, very Capablanca type chess now. Knight d4, knight beautifully central. King's coming up, pass pawn in the center. Absolutely beautiful. e6, vacating e5 for the king march. Doesn't matter about dropping f2. The king's coming in to a really aggressive square. Reminding me of Capablanca Tartakawa, that classic game with Rook on the seventh. Absolutely beautiful. The king coming in on the dark squares. Rook takes b6. Okay, temporary reprieve for the seventh rank. But now e7, absolutely winning this position. Rook b8. The pass pawn wants the queen. Black's just totally busted here. And here the game uh, adjudicated win for white. White can just play knight d6 here and just, just uh, knight f7 queening, for example. Now, my impression of this game, I think it's instructive exchange Slav. I think it shows some venom in white's position. The black bishop being pushed back inside the pawn chain is well-known idea. Black played that computer move knight h5. It was punished what I call a much more long-term downside peeling open that g-file long-term downside persistent pressure on the g-file snapping off on c4 left an entrenched bishop on e5 the other white pieces very, very uh, available to go on the attacking uh, coordination front the sacrifice on g6 head of the pawn chain shows maybe leaders not there with total clinical accuracy but what she played was winning anyway so it doesn't really matter basically in, in an end-to-end -end practical game give Leela some tactical puzzles she might not score as highly as other engines but end-to-end -end games is a different kettle of fish her positional chess is often much more important putting tactics in a much wider context end-to-end -end chess basically not just tactics in isolation so that g5 earlier in the game just secured a ton of pressure and it was for me a beautiful game to play through the end game, marching the king, uh, rook on the seventh, just snapping off the pawns. It was absolutely beautiful, I thought. Hope you enjoyed it too. Comments, questions, like, shares, appreciated. Thanks very much.